YouTube, welcome. Um, get your little snackies, okay? Under the Mayo is a YouTuber who made a infamous um part of how God of War ra War was just ruined. Um, and it was a very extensive review on how shit 2018 um God of War was, and it got a lot of criticism. And now he's back with God of War Ragnarok. And I'm going to be watching it and giving my thoughts on this video because um, I really don't have anything else to do God of War related. In April of 2019, um, so we like the game. So, yeah. I released what is now the most infamous negative review yep. of the God of War reboot. Go. And the following year, well, I expanded snackies, on it bro. with a second part focusing on specific issues and what I believe to be the motive behind certain creative changes. Mm -hmm. The lead up to God of War Ragnarok on my end has been a constant stream of people asking if I expect to hate it or if I think it's going to be better. How could I possibly make a follow-up that lives up to that original video in <laughs> just a few weeks when that video took me a year? Oh. Well, all He's gonna make a comparison to how God of War 2018 and how God of War Ragnarok... All I can oh. do is try. This right. is how God of War Ragnarok was ruined. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, he's gonna be... I thought they were going Oh, and then also I bought God of War 3, so I'm gonna do a let's play on that. That's really fun. Because uh, apparently that's one of the better ones of the OG trilogy. Written and edited by Under the Mayo. Okay. Yeah, Motherfudger made a very infamous video. And now this is the sequel. While my initial trailer reaction certainly skewed towards the negative side, as I was disappointed to see that not much had changed, mm -hmm. I have honestly been excited for the release of Ragnarok. Really? I stayed away oh, from no. any other previews, I only heard bits here and there about changes made to the combat system, they were touting the new verticality the game offers, there was yep, supposed to be more enemy variation, so, much. so before I start talking about what this game does right and wrong, I want to say that I'm not going to be repeating too much of what I've already said. I will get the video is an hour long in certain oh, familiar hell. territory with things like the camera, but I'm not here to complain <laughs> endlessly that you can't jump. Yes, I still hold the same view that no aerial combat options ends up limiting the game significantly. Of course, yes, yeah, it's but still awkward no way to see areas you should be able to jump to, but you that's can't. Fair, fair. Yes, I still think this game's combat would be far more interesting with a resource management system like the originals, where you have to find magic instead of it being on a cooldown. I'm I also not going to cool. talk about how this game <clears throat> doesn't have a combo meter, because the problem was never that there wasn't a combo meter. The problem was the lack of any effective system system at all to encourage experimentation. Okay, the way actually, XP rewarding okay, that actually would be really good. If there was a fucking combo system and the resource management, I guess it would, I mean, I don't, I mean, if that worked in God of War 3, I don't know why they didn't repeat it for this one to make it very different from 2018. The combo meter can. But okay. Now, there is a good system, it just isn't a combo meter, and we'll get into that soon. Ragnarok has been the most mixed and inconsistent gaming experience I've ever had. Really? We're ever? We're going to talk about the good, oh, the bad, no. the amazing, and the terrible. Okay, Perhaps we had better start from the beginning. <laughs> I picked the second highest difficulty. Give me no <laughs> I did too, but then I, <laughs> I, I put it back to balance because I'm a little fucking beta gamer. See, because I wanted a very challenging combat experience. But I wasn't fully prepared for pure suffering on the very highest difficulty because I knew yeah. this was already going to be a very long game. And after I finish it, hours. I can replay it on the highest difficulty, better understanding the combat. <laughs> we start the game, and the first 10 minutes is a bunch of cutscenes and a oh, driving no. section with button prompt QTEs as Freya comes for her. And that's end. okay? It's fine oh, i was expecting gosh. this it's nice that you can actually fail these it's a QTEs playstation and third party if you're not paying attention i took that as a good sign and it's at least we aren't slowly dragging our feet as we carry the log <coughs> this time unfortunately okay. the rest of this sequence is completely fake you can steer the sled but it's unnecessary you can just keep your hand off the controller i mean yeah obviously i mean it's a linear you. game like you want to just fucking run the sled, into i noticed an immediate improvement roll the clip can I swing this axe on my back? No. Oh my gosh, this review is actually so Wouldn't bad. Wouldn't let the player break the immersion of this walking scene. All right, time to test it. Get off the sled, take control of Kratos, and wow! Would wow! You look at yeah, that? look at you. I'm you can swing your axe when there's no enemies around. And see what they do. This was a criticism very specific to you my know video. What they do. And this change is something else okay. I saw as a good sign. They're not forcing me to walk around unable to see what my character can do until they say so. There's no enemies story, here, yeah, exactly. but it doesn't matter. I want to see what the buttons do, and they let me. So thank you. The mm -hmm. moment I was able to experiment with my combat options, I lit up with optimism. Rear. 
One of my principal criticisms with God of War 2018 is that you are so limited with what you can do in the starting hours that it makes combat feel really one-dimensional, especially when you compare it to the originals, which (laughs) we're going to do right now. Just looking at God of War 1, in the first level you have light attack and heavy attack with three different combo enders, lock and roll, an air launcher with an air boost follow up allowing Yeah, but then you have that for the rest of the game, so it's an air grab for extended juggles, a ground to air grab for bouncing mm -hmm. enemies, and three (laughs) different grab options that gave you fast kills or throwing enemies around to control space. It wasn't an overwhelming amount of options, it was the perfect amount to experiment with as we're learning the game. Okay, yeah, that's fair. God of War 2018 stripped away so many of these options without replacing them in the early game. So on your first playthrough, all you had were light and heavy attack, axe throw, fist, parry, and dodge. It was all so basic. It was hard to get excited about. It led to an absurdly boring troll fight and an almost equally uninteresting boss fight with Brody or whatever his name is. Just hacking away and dodging. No other options. And once you did accumulate some more interesting combat options as you're making your way up the mountain, the game was already well on its way to becoming broken due to how badly balanced the RPG mechanics were in combination with a ridiculous amount of runic attack spam and busted Atreus electric arrows. To be fair, you do not need to use... It's like Elden Ring. It's not... It's not... it's, It's like Elden Ring, right? You can use the broken stuff, but you don't have to use the broken stuff. You can do, like, you can play the game harder, or make the game harder on yourself if you want a harder experience. Ragnarok, on the other hand, has completely remedied this. Right away, you have access to an axe ability that charges up a heavy freeze attack by holding triangle, applying frost, and we have sprinting attacks. It's amazing how much of a difference this makes in getting started. In just one hour, you get the blades. You have access to two blade grapple attacks that bring enemies into you and auto launches into the air, or charges them with an explosive from far away. Yeah, it is a. The blades can be spun around vertically by mashing triangle for combo juggles, or for swiping attacks or splash damage attacks. This went on to be my favorite attack due to its ability (laughs) to interrupt enemy animations and apply burn damage. They definitely want okay. you to use this because they have an area that specifically tells you about it, and it can be significantly upgraded. Yeah. As soon as you start upgrading skills, you have enough XP to unlock the ability to do extra damage against enemies with elemental effects, further utilizing the new elemental abilities using Seems like he's enjoying the game, surely. Weapon the last one he and like, you can absolutely unlock hated the God it. of War 3 Hyperion grapple attack that brings you to the enemies, providing a great mobility option. There's like triple the combat options right in the first hour and a half of the game. And I started thinking, wow, some of my biggest problems in 2018 have already been addressed. This is great. This is enjoyable. And maybe I'm just imagining it, but it feels like enemies are hanging in the air a bit longer for combo opportunities. We are quickly introduced to the new vertical combat option, Death From Above, where if you run off a ledge and attack in the air, you come crashing down on the enemies below. It's nice, I appreciate the inclusion, (laughs) and I I appreciate the more vertical design of some of the combat spaces, with ledges you can climb up and points to swing from. I did like this. It's a noble effort at making combat encounters more interesting, but I gotta be honest and say I don't think it adds much to the gameplay. I can see from playing God of War 3 to this game that, like, it's such a big difference, because God of War 3 had so much... I'm pretty sure you could like have multiple weapons and you could go in the air and do all that stuff. But this is a different game. It's more grounded. Like spaces with these so, vertical you know, levels, and it basically comes down to fighting on level one or going up and fighting on level two. It's the same thing. Without a jumping option, mm. attempts at verticality are pretty underwhelming. It's fake verticality, and it doesn't do much for me fake other than verticality. remind me of how much better the combat mm, would be if I, I could thought jump. it was pretty good. And if I could see. The camera is still just the worst. The video here doesn't really communicate how it feels it to was play not this that game, bad, so bro. let's bring it in a bit. A little more, a little more, there. That's how it feels to play modern God of War games. No, no, it doesn't. In a game it where enemies fun. are frequently running to your side and behind I, you, I can admit, sometimes it's like, like I had to like, and like, directing your turn my controller like a lot, but it's, it's not that bad. It's just the worst. 
It makes so much of the game, combat and exploration, feel so claustrophobic. That's and true. it's made infinitely worse by the fact that Kratos can't attack yeah, exactly. in any direction tones other than the right in front of him. Many tones. viewers of my channel will be familiar with my dislike of melee action where you have to control the camera. But it is far more tolerable in a hack and slash game like Bayonetta or Devil really? May Cry or a brawler like Sifu, where yes, you have to move the Sifu? camera. Sifu? Okay, this guy's just bad at video games. Okay, don't quote me on that because I just said that I played the fucking Give Me Balance difficulty. But I could do Give Me Mercy. But no way, Sifu was an amazing game. And you could, you could literally, <clears throat> what's it called? Control it and do it, which is fine. It adds an extra layer of difficulty. You can also to it, move your character in any direction. If an oh enemy is to your left, just attack to your left. Actual if an enemy is behind exactly. you, do a backwards attack. You don't have to reposition the camera. I thought Ghost it was of fun. Tsushima did this just fine. Why can't God of War? Here you have to uh, turn the camera yeah. towards whoever you're fighting, and it's just as tedious as it was in 2018. If not more so, because I of the, some I of the feel new like enemies, the combat would be too while I do like their know. designs, they tend to run all over the place <coughs> and zoom past you. Beta, you have to beta rely gamer, even more on the terrible indicator issue. system to react to colored arrows <laughs> for enemies off screen. It creates a state of paranoia when you're yeah, trying paranoia. to Yeah, paranoia! You want to be- they want you to be scared while playing so you're on edge, so you're tense. This but guy, got okay. Telling you that something is coming, but you have yes, no you can way see of that. What it is yes, exactly little bro, you had so hit, much time. If it's an and you have the thing where you slow down. Oh, man, attack. Man. So you just gotta stop what you're doing and reposition yourself just to see. It's so tedious, and it ruins a lot of the combat momentum. When you're fighting a couple enemies that are in your view, things can work pretty well. Mm -hmm. You can focus on the damage you're doing Eli, while being ready stop, to react please. to any Scratch incoming attack, to dodge, parry, or interrupt. That's when combat feels the best, but you yeah. can still end up struggling to target who you want when the Beta. enemies start moving about. And the problem is that can, it's If people can beat that guy in the boss or whatever, GNA or whatever her name was, then this guy can do these enemies like mechanically hard to focus I, I don't know. on it's one enemy that it's that so many enemies will surround you and attack you from behind oh, so the combat becomes about managing Aware. your view more than feeling the energy of the fight if you put That's yourself fair. in the middle of the action i feel like managing the camera can also add like fucking difficulty and tenseness Hero. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally, Mamir says behind you, your this guy just does not And there's a know. horrible bug He's where actually... after you do specific animations, if you try to quick turn, the game will forget the block input and instead read the down input first, <laughs> causing you to come out of your quick turn animation with your fists instead of your weapon. I yeah, bet I've I just never, cleared I up something for a lot of players wondering why they suddenly weren't holding their weapon. You can test this yourself. Pick up something from the ground or run and do an axe drop and hold block as you're coming out of the animation and start tapping down to quick turn. It You'll ain't see that, that your weapon is gone okay. after the quick turn finishes. I ain't doing all that though, little bro. Watch here. Holding block during the end of the execution, Kratos starts pulling out his Kratos blades instead of blocking like I'm telling him to. Next, the down input causes him to pull out the spear, and then the game recognizes <laughs> the block button I've been And they still to. have not even attacked you yet, so is it really that deep? The past two seconds weapons. and lets me quick turn, but now I get with it. the wrong weapon. The controls just feel and probably unresponsive got hit and died sometimes, that on top of the general the clunkiness this month. game has. There were a lot of times where I hit the weapon switch button, but nothing happened. You also can't switch weapons while blocking. If you have the axe out and you're blocking, okay. you have to let go of block <coughs> and then switch well, weapons. Well, that's fair because when it's, you the blades of chaos, you have to hold You really should just hands, be right? able to come out of block with a different weapon. I guess because it's not realistic, but you oh, can switch weapons oh. while rolling, and that's not realistic, so <laughs> what the fuck? You also can't run while switching weapons. Yeah, that, okay, that was an issue. Switch, I agree. Kratos stops running, which is Kratos. just terrible and awkward. There's just a general lack of input buffering that makes things feel wrong. If you press the buttons to deactivate Spartan Rage during an animation, wait. it doesn't cause Spartan Rage to stop once the attack finishes. You have to wait until Kratos stops moving. Oh yeah, yeah that was an issue I had too. Yeah, yeah, burn yeah, your yeah. meter for nothing. That and was the an worst issue, is when you throw it. your axe, but then you do a takedown animation and it shows Kratos with the axe. And then you go back to not having okay, the axe. Okay, that, yep, yep, he is right, he is right. 
destroy yourself with the axe. There is some so right. You try there's to do a truth. magic attack, but it doesn't work because you haven't recalled the axe yet. The axe that there should you have just been finished with your hand, hands. I don't know. It's if it confusing. Was, but I understand. Lisa. Getting back to the camera, in a way, I think they're aware of the camera issues because a lot of the game is actually focused on one-on-one -on -one boss fights, and that's where or this game the shines. The best part of God of War 2018 was the Valkyrie fights. Well, really only on New Game Plus, because in the regular game you could just rune expand them to death, even <laughs> on the highest difficulty. 2018 had boss fights in the campaign, and they mostly sucked. The first Brody fight sucked, the Bro. giant dragon was nothing more I enjoyed than throwing that one, balls at him and yeah. hacking away at his toes. And the final Brody fight was okay, Good as well. Good the story. trolls were everywhere, yeah, the, the first one True. sucked, and there the rest of them very, sucked too. There was not that much boss variety back then. They know this, that's why there's an awesome joke troll appearance where Kratos <laughs> just immediately kills it, sending a clear message to fans that they know the trolls sucked and they won't be appearing in this game. Except for a few appearances later in side missions, and that's, that's fine. Yep. By that time, they die super fast. Don't complain. It's nice to see Santa Monica have a <laughs> sense of humor about their game's faults. This time around, the number of boss fights in the main campaign of Ragnarok is truly impressive. Yep, there, was there must a good have one. been, what, 10, maybe more? Plus dozens of optional fights. And now that you've got the spear, you have more ways to engage yep, in combat. True. I don't enjoy the spear. Surely he's not going to be a boss. Much surely. as a normal weapon, but I like the runic attacks. When a boss flies away from me, I chase his ass down with the spear, and it's so satisfying. Boss fights are awesome because you finally don't have to worry about enemies attacking you from beta, off screen. Beta, and you just focus beta, on fighting beta, an interesting beta. opponent. In Ragnarok, it isn't 10 minutes before you fight a boss, the bear, and it's cool. It shows off the defensive mechanics of the game really well, way better than 2018's introductory troll. And after the next cutscenes, we get to battle Thor. They're really opening the game strong. It's True. like how God of War 3 one of the best taking fights on ever. Poseidon as your first enemy. Combat feels better, camera problems are minimal for a while due to the multiple one-on-one -on -one boss fights, and we've already met both Odin and Thor. We meet up with Mimir, and I intro. love that he's just living in Kratos' cabin now. I guess he just sits on the table all day. We're treated to a dream sequence where we see Kratos' wife like we should have in the first game. I never Little cared bro, stop. Stop with that, stop with that. It was for the story purposes that you did not see Faye like and it leave it as a mystery they knew there was going to be a sequel so why give it away to spread his dead wife's ashes because we never got to see her or I, see how... I cared about his mission with the spreading the ashes even though I didn't see it sometimes in life you don't need to see someone to care about them hmm is that is that hard? Is that a hard quote? I don't even know. Yeah, Thor fight Kratos was amazing. Feels Tonight, about her. Now we do. It's crazy. Too bad I find her quite unlikable. Watch that. You she don't reminds need me of this person who I strongly dislike. <clears throat> she even has a did. moment of dialogue that's exactly like this character. Oh, that's good. But I really like the portrayal of Odin and Thor. They yep, feel very authentic I to this Odin. world. That was I actually, like seeing I Thor actually. as a large one of my drinking Viking. And I particularly like seeing Odin as just a normal guy. He's not some commanding presence, he's just the guy in charge. Yep. A normal old man who has authority and cares only about- Oh my gosh, Sif! I forgot she existed for a second. Holy shit balls, I missed her. His control. I'm I no expert new game. on Norse mythology. I'm sure there have been many interpretations of these characters. If anyone is upset by this interpretation, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yep, but true. after all the years of only seeing oh, the Marvel man. versions, this was refreshing. True. And then true. we start the central conflict of God of War Ragnarok. Truly, he Atreus is take. searching for Tyr because he wants to know more about the giants and his <clears> destiny <throat> as Loki. And Odin wants him to stop. Kratos says no. Odin goes on to manipulate them both. And that's about it. This is Atreus' story, and the story yes. of everyone else. This game cares little for the character of Kratos, as he is- WHAT?! Are you kidding me?! He literally went on a whole arc of like accepting like what he did in the past and doing better. He literally tried to avoid his fucking, um, fate of being a destroyer, and at the end of the game- he did! He literally had the mural that said that he was like a god of peace. What do you mean? It is both of their stories. That's why when you get the Platinum Trophy, it is the bear and the wolf or something. And that is 
Kratos and Atreus. It is their story. Is relegated to and it's been their story since 2018. A oh, man following no. his son's reckless ambitions. Oh, this is no. not Kratos' mission. So much yeah, like the last game, I found it very hard to care about what's happening. That's good. Not liking Atreus certainly didn't that's help. Why, that's why this little bro's review was infamous back then. In the first cutscene, Atreus like is this. already yelling at us. It's incredible that they start this game with Atreus whining. And it's not about the dialogue. Oh I understand God. they have to set up character conflict. It's about the delivery. Atreus's issues. His acting was good. He literally got a game of like a game awards nomination. Oh, delivered in hell a much more no. conversational, non-shrill, non-bitchy way. But the way they write this character is abrasive and annoying. It has the best narrative nomination, best acting from Christopher Judge and Sin on Sunny Soldier. Ain't no way. Point. Yeah, and Kratos did not sideline. We put as Kratos for like, uh, well, actually, no, we do play as Loki for a while. Now, Atreus. look, Atreus isn't as bad Still. as he was in the first game That's because cool. he's not a whiny eight year old brat. He is a little older now. His voice isn't as irritating. I tolerate him more this time around. I can't imagine like playing games like this. Yeah, Sonny killed it. I, can't I wish they had made him like older, like early 20s. Yes, mm, I'm aware that Fimbo nice Winter stuff. only lasts a few years, but you may recall that this is a series that plays with the concept of time. Kratos opened True. portals in God of War 2 that took him to the past. Just in the last game, he entered a portal in True. Alfheim where he experienced time differently than Atreus. <laughs> what have you done? If Santa Monica really wanted to, they could have easily found a way to age up Atreus uh, by having no, him get lost in some time portal and pop out the other end in his 20s. And I really wish they had. By the way, no. I refuse to believe that this part isn't a jab at my video. In my original video, what? in the section where little I- Lil bro, not everything is about you. They did not make this for you, little bro. I talked oh, about how no, much no. I hate Atreus. There's a part where I talk about his annoying way of speaking, and I show a montage of him saying whatever. This kid even says whatever when he gets pissy. Whatever. 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 Lil bro think the game mate was made for him. Don't wake him. Whatever. And then we have this part in Ragnarok. Whatever. 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 <laughs> Okay, that'd be funny. Whatever. Whatever. Hey! Whatever. Don't run off! Whatever. Whatever. Can you tell me Whatever. where I am? Whatever. Okay, that's fair. It is a very clever way of taking a dig at me. I must No admit. one took a dig at you. He's trolling. This guy's trolling. I'm sure. Like, literally, everything he says comes off as serious because his voice is just so serious, but, like, he's trolling. Some of the developers have seen my video by this point, and if they were going to respond in any way, this is a brilliant way to do it. Okay. I approve, I love it, I laughed really hard when it happened. I suppose it could be coincidence, but yeah, I doubt it. Yes, it is anyway, coincidence, it's not supposed. Like kid. I don't like walking around with him, and I don't like how much of the game is dedicated to him. Me personally, this guy should have loved, this guy should have loved Atreus's um, fucking gameplay. Because I'm spitting all over the camera, I'm sorry. Because in the first game, this guy complained about weapon variety, or not weapon variety, this combat variety, everything, bosses, everything. You get to play as a completely different character with separate abilities. Like, that is so much more variety than 2018. Like, they did perfect adding, like, I love Trace's part. Because if we didn't get any of this section, okay, this section was really boring, and I was waiting for it to get over. Because, same with the side quest, I did not do a single side quest when I played it. I'm sorry. Because you can't make me fight Thor and talk to Odin and fight a bear and have the Blades of Chaos and my fucking axe in the first hour of the game and then make me, like, chase a boar <laughs> for a side mission or, like, save the city or, like, save, like, some water, like, way or whatever that thing was in Spartelheim or whatever. And I know it's to, like, show that Kratos is becoming a different person. He's not doing side quests of killing people. I know that. I'm not complaining about that. But you can't expect me to do that. This was really boring. And then also... I loved the Trace's gameplay. It was a good refresh. I loved playing as him. And it just, it just, um, I don't know, like, it just adds more variety to the game as a whole, the story as a whole. Because say if, like, when, like, he w did this whole dream thing and, like, he teleported here. Say if we didn't get any of that. We played Kratos for a while and, like, we're looking for him. And then all of a sudden, Atreus spawns out of nowhere and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, Dad, I got a girlfriend and I raised a snake that's going to become Jotungandr. And, like, all this would have happened off camera, like. This was the best way, I think, to show this, or to show that progression. 
Thank you. Thank you, Lips. I, I am. I enjoy I'm, the moments where Kratos I've already thought about all this in my mind. For him, but that's because I care about Kratos. Oh, Seeing man. him smile as he <laughs> witnesses Atreus becoming independent put a smile on my face True. as well. True. And it's one of my favorite moments in the entire <laughs> series. I don't like his kid, but I feel for Kratos. Okay. And I am how moved do you by still the scenes like where we see how much he loves his son. And some of my favorite story moments come from these interactions between Kratos and Atreus. But there's something off about <laughs> his face, and the way he talks immediately spoils the mood of dramatic moments. Things that should be serious in tone are undermined by his nonchalant okay, attitude. Okay, that's fair. This is funny. I liked- I love this hello. whole scene. Hello! Yeah, I he said hello! What are you supposed to do? Oh, Times I got absorbed by the story, following uh -oh, these legitimately this. interesting characters, Dancing. when Atreus oh. has to butt in and make some comment and ruin the whole scene. It's really frustrating because I like everyone else a lot, and I can easily imagine a God of War 2018 and Ragnarok where Atreus is not a part of any <laughs> of them. Desperately trying to skip cutscene is crazy. Ain't no way. Okay, stop. Stop. This could have just. To be fair though, that's a good criticism. They need to add a sk skip cutscene because if you're trying to play the game and you don't like again for the second time, third time, fourth time, you don't want to have to keep watching these cutscenes. Been a lonely that's man fair. in the woods Still. dealing with his demons Stop when that. he comes across Freya after he wounds her pig during a hunt. He and blurred out the kid. And there we go. Atreus is searching for what it means to be Loki, eventually going on to try to stop Ragnarok, and Kratos is just along for the ride. Yes. Isn't that a compelling narrative it's for not, our But he's not along for the character? ride. Toss in a few flashback scenes <clears throat> with his dead wife where they talk about how he's scared to have a baby, and I guess you have a story of some kind. Okay, the story guy's depends drooling. entirely on Atreus, and unfortunately, he's the Jar Jar Binks of God of War. Oh, stop! Actually, stop! Early on. The Jar Jar Binks of God of War is crazy. No, he's not. Oh my gosh. On, you can this just tell so that this dead. little puñetas is going to be the cause of every fucking problem we encounter. And Shit, he calm is. Down, bud. Everything bad that happens happens because of him. He sneaks out at night to go on his own adventures. Because to be fair, he is a little teen, bro. Yeah, he's helping his son find himself and vice versa. Atreus, uh, was this like. It's kind of like Last of Us, too. Uh, or Last of Us Part 1, 2. But fucking Kratos is helping Atreus discover him. And Atreus is helping Kratos discover him. Or, like, whatever the word is. You know what I mean? Like, they're both helping each other, like, learn, like, about each other. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. It's obeying orders. It's Everything dumb. he does is in service of himself. And everyone suffers because of it. Hey, Not in service for himself. He wants to stop Ragnarok, little bro. Which affects all of the realms! The original Ragnarok prophecy says that everything's going. He was able to just make it Asgard, or Asgard, Asgard. Well, not just he, him, but a multitude of people. He... That sounds like Kratos' behavior in the old games, doesn't it? Yeah, but the difference is that when it's Kratos doing it, he's the main character. We yeah, are literally, he wants to save his dad. To his story, yeah, he's about actually likable and interesting, Shit. and his games have a fun, <clears throat> not-so-serious tone to them. Here, every moment following Atreus is boring and annoying, and this it's telling so that the most good. compelling moments of the story come from characters rightfully scolding him for his selfishness and his foolishness, for being okay. the burden oh, he oh. is. It's glorious. I gave you everything. Oh. My skills. Not this scene. Stop. My friendship. My home. My secrets. My treasures. And you just kept taking. And now what have I got? Oh, Sindri, bro. We. <sighs> Poor guy. He didn't deserve that. There is no we. There's only you. No matter what the cost. So what you can do... Is get the fuck out of my <laughs> sight. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. I could watch an hour of that. Okay, the campaign bro. is constantly okay. interrupted by Atreus sections because it was oh, yes. good. I thought this guy would like this it. time around. Santa Monica Studio has made it clearer than ever that what they really want to do is make the Atreus game. You take control of Atreus okay, like seven so times, cool. I think, and it's almost always bad. 
The first mission is kind of alright. It's interesting to see how this character moves and fights. He, he's mainly just probably going to complain about the fucking Ironwood scene, which to- The thing we'll is that he that plays later. much better than Kratos in this camera <laughs> style. Because, like I've said before, this camera style I'm a beta is made and I can't shooters, move a camera. not melee although, action games. This here. is how Resident Evil 4 is supposed to control, not God of War. Atreus is so agile and he has yes, strong bro, long range really options. Good. It's like the game was made for him. The first time you fight with Atreus, it's actually liberating compared to how clunky and immobile Kratos is. I mean, he didn't used to be this way, but, okay. you he's, know. he's also old! Have we ever thought about that? He's also like a fucking, like, 80 years plus old. Maybe, I don't know about actually, but... Golly, Conversion, brother. I guess. The Atreus dynamic with Sinji was good, because then it makes us care more about when Brock dies. Like. Arrows, inflict major stun, dive out of the way while shooting, knock enemies on the ground while in combo. He's pretty cool to control. Uh -huh. That is, until you realize that almost all of the- <clears throat> He recovers a lot of health from just one pickup, he does a lot of damage, and most okay, of Okay, but then if Kratos' gameplay was all like this, he'd be like, It's too easy. This game's too fights easy Fights are for just me. super tame. They're pushovers. I'm trying to figure out why they did this. Why make Atreus so powerful and brain dead most of the time? Are they trying to make us think he's really cool by making him kick so much ass easily? Most of the combat here is trivialized and it's boring. I Playing it's one mission fun. was okay. I can do that. But Mission 2 is the worst part of the game. It That's is, fair. in no exaggeration, an hour and a half of unskippable cutscenes, following dogs yeah. and talking to yourself, walking around and listening yeah, to- Yeah, it was a little boring! Talk, okay. Skipping stones on the lake, occasionally fighting wimpy enemies that don't stand a chance, looking at paintings, carrying seeds, talking about paintings, walking, opening chests, talking, riding a bull slowly through the marshes, bad combat, talking, picking up apples, writing Riding through the marshes some more, talking, running around, okay, okay. riding a bull, talking, fighting bugs in the dark, picking up more apples, walking around, talking, more bad combat, okay. playing the most pathetic and uninteresting boss fight in the game. This boss was really good. This boss was really good. I enjoyed it. And this was Donkey's favorite. Running through the fields as a dog in a part that- I love this part too plays itself for you since you don't even have to press the analog stick and okay. listening to the most annoying sound ever recorded in human history. Ooh, yeah. Dude, this sound was gas! What are you talking about? I felt like I was floating every time I listened to it. Yeah. This song was yeah. gas! Yeah. Yeah. That's- yeah. this was good! Yeah. What are you talking an about? An hour and a half of- Okay, but to be fair, yes, it was a very- it was boring in comparison to the rest of the game. It was- it's true. But I did like the character development, so. This? You really it think Atreus is so interesting that we're gonna be happy to put down everything and spend 90 minutes doing this shit? <laughs> Fuck off, Santa Monica! Fuck off! You know who you remind me of? These people. Naughty dog. Oh, never mind. What? Ah! Ah! Their heads are so okay, far what? up their own asses. It's the only explanation for this. It's the only explanation for the next Atreus section, Which where all you amazing. do is walk around Asgard It was listening. great! I love this part, because I love Odin, and you got to learn more about the inner workings, and you got to see Mommy Sif, Mommy Sif, Sister, sister Throod, bruh, the all of the all of the fifteen women. minutes After pretending to climb the Asgard wall. Yes, pretending to climb. When I saw this wall and heard Atreus say he was going to climb it, I thought, no, there's no way they're going to make me fake platform up this giant ass wall. <laughs> fake but platform. oh yes, yes this they guy are. Loves his Acting platform. like we're supposed to be impressed by this epic quest, which I'm sure plenty of people fell for. Oh wow, look how high I'm climbing. It's so dangerous to be doing this. Okay, so but no. for me, it's more like they were openly laughing in the face of everyone who had an issue with the fake platforming and boring climbing sections of God of War 2018. But you want they them to make do you it. climb this massive wall, but you can't fall off. There's no way to grab the wrong section or lose your- I know damn well this little guy would be complaining if he did fall and die. Like, oh. Grip or even voluntarily walk off the fucking edge. Because this game refuses to allow any kind of consequence outside <sighs> of direct combat and QTE moments. Even Uncharted, the, visual, the game the that arguably amazing. started all this cinematic gaming nonsense and oh, easy as this auto-platforming trend, let you make mistakes and fall to your death. But what's the, really the point of that?
I don't understand. Gotta be some kind of actual yeah. danger to platforming <laughs> sections, or there's no that? reason for them to exist. I don't and know. just to insult us that's, a little bit. Okay, that's actually kind of fair. I kind of see where he's coming from, but at the same time, why? Or they say, oh, are you getting bored with pretending to climb a wall? Oh, yeah, let's Here, give you some enemies. Some I hated this. Why would you give me enemies when I'm trying to fucking climb? And also, you could just tell when there were sections of the game where it's like, oh, okay, they're gonna throw some enemies at me. It's like, sometimes when I'm walking and enjoying a story, I don't want to get fucking just. Attacked by three little orbs. Like, come on, come on. Come on. Bubbles, it's a little filler. It's a little filler. Now I get understand. Back to climbing. The fact that you literally cannot fall completely destroys the illusion of I danger kind of and this. turns this entire section into a pointless series of holding directions on the controller and hitting circle when it says so. It That's is fair. awful. It's the kind of moment that truly reflects the times we're in. Because 20 <laughs> years ago, a moment like this would have been a 90 second cutscene, where we get some epic camera angles and dramatic music showing an exciting montage uh -huh. of Atreus scaling the wall. Short, to the point, fun to watch. But we're in the age of cinematic gaming now, okay. so every single Little moment bro just of hates climbing and fun. walking has to be some fake interactive sequence that's not only unskippable, but is dragged out due to playing out in real time <laughs> since it isn't subject to editing. It's uninteresting to watch because there's no intentional- Little bro think he has like important shit to do in his day. All he does is clown God of War. You're fine, enjoy it! Direction. And it's immersion breaking because people can be talking about the most serious thing in the world while you're dicking around with the camera. This is why the unbroken single camera style of this game is an utter failure. Because it leaves zero opportunity for editing, which murders the pacing. It could. And far more than it did in the last game. I was gonna say, it, like, just because you have a slow camera does not mean you can't edit anything. You could do the thing where, like, you bring your camera... Excuse me. Bring your camera like into like a thing and it cuts the black and then it fades back into that black like it's possible. Editing, which murders the right. pacing and far more Once than again, it did in the last game pace. because there's just so much more Mind. of it. This game is incredibly long which doesn't have to be a bad It is not that long. It's long if you do all the side stuff but it was bad quick. thing. But there's like 20 times the amount of unskippable cutscenes and they're so long and, and there's the so were much gas. walking around and talking and that's not the me when story like what do you want you bought a story game you bought a third person playstation action adventure game what do you expect they're almost all like these walking like cinematic experiences the i don't only understand. thing that ruins the pacing of this game they also ruin it intentionally by placing a traversal Puzzles. puzzle after what feels like every combat encounter for the majority sure. of the campaign, and even in many side missions, the game is terrified to give you more than one combat encounter. Large portions of the game yeah, are fighting when three or four enemies, story, and then spending the next five to ten <laughs> minutes walking, talking, climbing, watching cutscenes, and solving puzzles. And then maybe you get to fight another three or four enemies before going through the whole process again. It isn't until much later in the game mm -hmm. that they finally start consistently delivering combat. Their world and story is so Because important. they probably finally just like, they finally like kind of like planted the seeds of what they needed to do so that there's going to be more combat. That we have to take a break after almost yes, every ooh. fight, no matter how basic and unsatisfying it may have been. Because the combat encounters are generally unsatisfying for significant chunks of the game due to how infrequent they are and how frustrating the camera can be. Oh, and some people gave me crap for exaggerating the camera problems when you get yes. close to walls. Yeah, I don't think so. This <laughs> stuff happens plenty, and it so. sucks okay, every time. Okay, that's fair. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Okay. Okay, that's fair. I never had that problem, though. Because I'm just good at the fucking game that I don't get stuck behind a wall. I'm kidding. But yeah. I get it. I'm not saying all the combat encounters are bad. Some fights are okay. Sometimes there's interactable objects to use against enemies, <clears> like <throat> giant rocks or throwing mm -hmm. the axe that, into I crystals really like to reflect into them. It yep. makes things feel a bit more dynamic. And when it feels like you have more control more, over the situation, um, namely by keeping things in camera, fights can feel good from time to time. So it's not all bad. I mean, anytime you have to fight worms or floating bubbles, it sucks. That's but true. Some of these I agree with that. I agree with that. I hated the fights with the, the bubbles, and I hated the fights with the little worms. Those were just boring. Fights are pretty good, and it's almost always the boss fights. 
The opening levels present you with multiple boss fights. The bear, Thor, the huntress, which was pretty fun to fight. That's the cool. Drekki, of which you fight multiple later. That Two was, enemies yeah. at once really is the maximum that this camera style can handle. <laughs> Shut the fuck the up. game delivers so, boss fights so pretty funny. steadily throughout the campaign and uh, open world, and I so honestly much. enjoyed nearly all of them. There are beefed up mini bosses scattered around, and there's these great optional <coughs> berserker boss fights that can be very challenging. Some of these guys took me a couple hours to take down, and it yeah. forced me to get good. It was the best- Man, really? Did, maybe they should have gave you this one first so that you didn't complain about the rest of the fucking game. Part of the game. If I had one criticism for the boss fights, oh, it's that this. I wish there were more puzzle elements involved. Have Wait. What? <coughs> Hold up. Let's wind it back, wind it back. To take criticism for the boss fights, it get good Wind this back. It was the best part of the game. Wind it back. If I had Listen. one criticism for the boss fights, it's that I wish there were more puzzle elements involved. Not even two minutes ago, he just complained about how the traversal puzzles after a combat section were ass and that he hated it and how it slowed down the pacing. He wants puzzles mid boss fight? Or like. Okay. Having to use pieces of the environment or, or something like that. I always come back to God of War 1, where you had to stun the Hydras serious? and then climb up to impale them so they stayed down while you went after the big guy up top. Stuff like that is fun. And that sounds cool, but I thought that would bog it down. It's like, boss what? fights more than just block and attack encounters. You can't just complain about it and do this. Bosses have unique attacks that you have to adapt to, and yeah. one thing I love is that they made me think more about what runic attacks I wanted to use. See, in the last game, I complained about it giving me so many runic attacks yes. when I can only use one for each runic slot, and none of it mattered anyway because the game was so broken. This time, mm -hmm. due to much better combat balance and better <coughs> enemy design, the game on Give Me God of War it's fine, I was thoughtfully exploring my options to pick easy. the right runic attack for the situation, something I really enjoyed. Sometimes a runic attack I like using would leave me too vulnerable in a fight, so I'd switch it out. Yeah, so the problem was never that there were too many runic attacks. That is a puzzle within itself. Figuring out, it's, like, it's like a little chess game, figuring out what moves next, or best next attacks in the last game, it's that there were so many while feeling like it didn't matter in the first place. This time, it does, and it feels good to have options, especially since it feels like I'm not breaking the game with any of them. The RPG elements have been toned down and slowed down in terms of how they're introduced. The whole green, blue, purple rarity system we see in every game today isn't plastered all over the armor page. Like so that? I'm actually looking at these different pieces instead of going directly to colors. That's fair. Wonderful. Now I don't have to think Fortnite while playing God of War. <laughs> I can just hear people complaining already. Where's my epic purple axe handle, bro? The biggest change is the oh, removal no. of oh, enchantments. Sweet lord in heaven, they actually took out the enchantments. 2018 buried you in like hundreds of these things that gave you little stat boosts, and it was exhausting. And you couldn't exhausting. sell them, so they just sat there. They're gone now, because we don't need to be thinking about equipable enchantments as we're figuring out the armor system and the combat. Instead, <laughs> what they've done is consolidated all these enchantments into an amulet that you find much later in the game. Yep. It has nine slots, only that. one open at first, where you can put enchantments that you start finding. And as you play the game, you'll be able to repair more slots to have more enchantments equipped. And there aren't dozens of crappy okay, plus sorry, two sounds, strength sounds enchantments like lying around, but they all have significant clear uses. Introducing this later in the game instead of in the beginning is a fantastic change. Oh, okay. It doesn't I'm surprised feel he wasn't overwhelming. Complaining. It feels like a natural extension of this game's <coughs> progression. And I enjoyed working with it. Being able to equip three enchantments of the same type to get a bonus perk was also a very nice touch. The only addition I don't care for much is all the different companion upgrades. You're given so many ways to buff the arrow attacks that I found it confusing and ultimately I just stopped engaging in it. You're given too many too fast that it starts to feel meaningless. The imp Or you can just like read, read what you want, read what they do and upgrade it accordingly. Like that's what I did. To be fair, yeah, it's a lot. But then you have so much materials if you're exploring and actually like engaging with the game that you can get what you want 
and pick what you want. Like, I don't really think Improvements to the open. inventory are appreciated. Okay. Now, whenever you open it, you are immediately notified of what can be upgraded <clears throat> or crafted. So you don't have to open everything individually I searching for upgrade it? opportunities. I have no idea. Still, I don't like this armor system because it goes okay, against mind. every design principle that defined Kratos as a character. Kratos. When they first started designing him for God of War 1, they started with a lot of armor but eventually realized the more armor they took away, the more intense the character looked. Kratos yeah. is not a man that needs to be covered in armor. When he's stacked head to toe in cloth and metal like this, That's it hides fair. the character design and it's a real shame. That's why the most powerful moment in this game is when Kratos design. Wind it back again. Sorry. When he's stacked head to dead. toe in cloth and metal like this, it hides the character design and it's a real shame. That's why. That's why. Don't interrupt me. That's why there is a transmog system where you can equip like this kind of outfit, but you can still wear a powerful outfit that would have the armor. So you can basically take off the armor, have the same effects of it. But a different skin, if that makes any sense. What is this guy talking about? If you want your character to look a certain way, you can make the character look a certain way and have the effects, the boost of your armor that's really good and really beefy. Golly, man, you should be complimenting this because I don't think it was in the first game. That's why the most powerful moment in this game is when Kratos takes off his armor. He should look like this the whole game. I don't care how cold it is in Midgard. I mean, he's walking around like this in the beginning. Why not keep it stripped down? I this should be exploring guy. this world as Kratos, and the more armor I have- Take it off and put it on the transmog system! I feel like I'm not. This guy and needs I like a fucking award in writing because the way that he writes these he's actually trolling so hard he does this on purpose 100 it needs some kind of motivation so because bad. it's so easy to find yourself going on and on in this world doing nothing due to how huge it is and how many parts involve rowing your boat or climbing walls so we're complaining and the that map the game doesn't help things content? at all i can't believe i never mentioned it in my first video but this map is terrible I know you're not going to have a GTA style waypoint system that shows the path you need oh, to take okay. to your objective, but you I at really least like need to allow system. me to zoom into the map to understand where I'm fucking going. <laughs> what supervisor at Santa Monica looked at this map, saw how little it zooms in, and said, yeah, that's good, we don't need to go any further. That's it's like fair. the designers don't want you to understand world traversal, and that makes the fast travel system much worse. Yeah, you still can't fast travel from any point. And I also hope that little bro was on a PS5, so if you mess up the fast travel, you can just kind of go back. And it's not like a fast travel cost any currency. If you're out in the middle this of nowhere goof. and you need to get to another realm, <coughs> to be fair, you have I can't to really march talk much your ass across the map I, um, to find a magic door, the and then you can travel to another so, point in this realm or another have realm. Some type of yes, it's it. nice that we can use any gateway to go directly to other realms now, but why not go all the way? Why couldn't the dwarves just give Kratos a jewel that allows him to open a gateway wherever he is in the realm to start fast travel? I'll tell you why, because the developers are so in love with their own world that they can't bear the thought of players not wandering around in oh it for the maximum gosh. amount of time possible. Okay, dude. Calm down. <sighs> Coming back to the combat, runic attack cooldowns are harder to exploit. At least they are during the most important parts so of the surely game. surely that's a good Mini thing, bosses right? and main bosses aren't massacred by just spamming constant runic attacks. And there are no broken companion abilities like the old Atreus electric arrows. You actually have to fight from beginning to end, right. and it's beautiful. So it's good, it's good, I right? I rarely ever felt like I made it through a late game encounter by just screwing around. And I never beat a boss by just stunlocking them with supers and companion attacks. Mm -hmm. Ragnarok so it's good. makes you play well. It's good, I right? immense respect for it because of that. Yeah. I really like most of the new enemy designs, even True. if a few of them really screw with the camera. The new big guys are fun, it's great to see more animal-like enemies, and having an enemy that you have to hunt down and <laughs> kill before you can damage anyone else That's is been a used fun before. way to mix I have no things idea up. Where, but yeah, I appreciate the variations of old enemies up. that appear, seeing how travelers might have a back attack this time around, or maybe wow. they'll swing their sword up wow. after Compliments. it gets stuck in the ground. Wow. I enjoyed every encounter with the Hateful because it made me play well for so long. Everyone is suitably annoying and challenging and interesting yeah. in their own ways to make you feel good about finally killing them. Except the 
wisps. They can yep. fuck off. Those suck, yeah. Wandering true, true. around I in concur. frozen Midgard, the canyons, and the jungle was the best experience I had in Ragnarok. I'd do a dope. side mission at my own pace, find some gear or a new attack, solve a puzzle, and then run over to a boss fight for an hour. Then go out searching for another crazy fight, of which there are many. It became exciting to see what kind of loot I'd get after defeating an optional boss because <laughs> he enjoyed the hateful because while I'm not a fan of loot-based oh, yeah. games okay. and I criticized 2018 for being heavily okay. loot-based, so I why is the video 20 more minutes? What can't more is there to complain that about? It feels good to find something nice after winning a good fight. That's the difference here. The fights are actually good this time. 2018 good, okay. felt like a series of unsatisfying and or broken combat encounters where the only joy to be found came from the loot drops. Okay. In Ragnarok, the big fights themselves are incredibly satisfying, so the loot feels like a reward and not compensation. Mm, I spent my days just wandering that. around looking for optional boss fights, avoiding the campaign because I knew the moment I went back to it, <laughs> something awful would be waiting for me. Oh, I'd finally shut up. shrug my shoulders and say, okay, I'll see what's next in the campaign. And surprise, surprise, is a bunch of cutscenes and a terrible section where this scene was awesome. This is in a bar fight. In a, in a fucking um, humanizes the store a little bit. He, ha he has all these family issues, which Kratos. That Kratos used to have with Atreus, and now it's getting better. What is this guy doing, dude? Like, this scene that humanized him because Thor was like oh, having like his drinking problems and shit. Like, you know, I a have... section that actually made my girlfriend uh, say, "Is this a joke? Are they laughing?" Is your girlfriend human? Do you even have a girlfriend? There is no way this guy has a girlfriend. Don't look at me like that. I know I'm ugly. Whatever. This guy does not have a girlfriend. Us? Ain't no way. Okay, so let's stay with the combat yeah, a little more shit. because I want to talk about an aspect of this game that has become very important to me. Something I talk about on this channel mm -hmm. all the time. And that's player accountability, creative incentive, and clear communication of a game's core systems. Okay. Three things that are guaranteed to lead even your most stubborn player into the fun zone. Okay. And what is the fun zone of God of War Ragnarok? Weapon variety, smart use of runic attacks and managing cooldowns, dodging and parrying, guard breaking, long distance targeting, okay, and okay. combos. That's Engaging cool. in all this stuff is what makes the game fun, and not all your players are going to start engaging in it if they can just get away with random bullshit for most of the game. That's true. The big difference in my experience with 2018 going into Ragnarok is that I felt like the fun way to play was now the right way to play. Overall, yeah. combat okay. just feels more interesting this time around. Yeah, That's okay. due to enemy balance, runic attack balance, new combat options, and I really came to like the different kinds of Spartan Rage. He likes Choosing the game! Choosing from the classic punch, punch, punch to regain health, a quick burst of health without doing damage, or a charging heavy attack that gives health if it kills someone. And since combat is better tuned this time around, thinking about which one to have equipped was actually fun. Before I get into what I really like about the new combat presentation, I gotta mention something that was horribly disappointing. Uh -oh. In the early game, uh -oh. I learned that if you finish a fight with very low health, you will recover some of it automatically. I yeah. thought, oh my god, they changed the health system, yes! See, I have a big problem with 2018's health system, because you can play like crap in every fight, and survive oh, okay, with barely any health, and then if you go into the next fight, you can just die right away, and you restart that checkpoint <laughs> with full health. So you want your game to be more difficult? I have no idea what the complaint here is. Put it on Give Me God of War. If it happens, it happens, but the game's harder. It's not like there's a ranking system like Bayonetta that punishes you for your <clears throat> deaths. You can just abuse it. So there's really no health resource reward for good defense. I was hoping they would restructure the game to have your current health level save with the checkpoint, and then you'd have to mm. work harder okay, to get fair. health in the next fight, that's finding fair. pickups, using rage to recover health, mm. etc. It's also a problem for runic attack cooldowns, because they reset too. Let's say you finish a fight by using all your runic attacks, and then you go into the next fight and you have no runic attacks, so you gotta fight straight for a while. Well, just die and restart right there okay, and get all your runic attacks back for free. It unfortunately okay. leads you to I, being I, I able to approach point, right? every point. fight the same way in the later game by opening big with runic attacks and then waiting for cooldown. True. It homogenizes combat. But you could also not do that. You could also not do that. Hear me out. You can play the game differently and you'd have a different experience. Oh, hmm. And I'm really sad to see this hasn't been changed in Ragnarok. <laughs> Seeing the small recharging health made me think they had done it, but they didn't. 
But I can't pretend they've done nothing. There's actually a fantastic reward for smart defense in the skill tree. If you land consistent hits while also avoiding damage, you build up elemental damage with your weapon, a feature yep. from the last game. But now, when it maxes out, you can overcharge your weapon. Activating it stuns surrounding enemies, and then you unleash projectiles that do frost damage, like the old heavy runic attack from 2018 that was kind of busted, or you cause the blades to build up additional rage with every hit. He I found it. myself excited whenever I got excited. close to filling up the bar so I could power up and start wailing on the enemies, and I got pissed whenever someone hit me and I lost the charge before I could activate it. Good stuff! Fortunately, up. something Let's that really go. helps is that you go quite a while without any heavy runic attacks, or at least I did. You're Howie. forced to legitimately You're play the game, being Don't defensive, stop. not relying on any kind of spam. And once you do start getting a lot of runic attacks, the enemies become balanced to be able to take a lot of punishment. So mm. even though you are able to exploit the checkpoint system by instantly spawning with full health and runic attacks, at least that doesn't equal an easy win in most cases, where it did in 2018. Okay, so what are the combat improvements? I already mentioned how the game starts you with more options. That's important for early experimentation in a game like this. Mm -hmm. A big more change in true. the combat presentation is in enemy weaknesses. We are shown early in the skill tree that frozen enemies take extra damage from blade attacks. Obviously. Cool. Weapon variety incentive. This also applies to burning enemies taking more damage from the axe. True. We have an early it's game mini boss in the Huntress that lets us stun her by throwing the axe at her horns, True. getting new players into the habit of long distance axe throwing, and capitalizing on enemy stun states. Energy shield enemies can be disabled oh, by using say? runic arrows, say? but you can also use charged <coughs> elemental attacks, runic attacks, and shield bash. Hexed enemies take extra elemental damage, which encourages the use of your spinning blade attack or charging frost on your axe. Some enemies protect their health bar in ways that are weak to different elemental attacks. Yes. You're given an early game choice of He's shield like type, it. going with a tanky shield for steady defense, or a rewarding parry focus shield with a great counter attack ability. These are amazing ways He's to get it. players into Surely. experimenting with the tools they may be ignoring. The skill tree has okay. also been revamped to get doom. players into using the skills they buy with a new system that makes future upgrades contingent upon the use of the original skill. You have to use an attack, say, 30 times in combat to gain yeah. access to more of a skill tree. Doing the skill tree this way means players are going to be looking at more options on the path to leveling up their characters yes. and mastering their use in combat. In a change that I absolutely love, there are now tiers of I skill like use, well, and when you hit gold tier, you can insert a coin okay. into that skill to enhance one of its properties. It's a really nice reward for using more than just the basic options available. Yeah, well, okay. So I like the changes to the skill tree, but I wish they didn't present the whole thing to you right away. It can be overwhelming, That's especially true. to a new player, to have That's three fair. different categories, Axe, Blades, and Atreus, each with three different The UI in the menus of this game were a little wonky, they were just very clever. ...trees so at the I beginning of the game. I think you should be introduced to one set of skill trees each at first, and have the rest open up throughout the first hour. And I want to say thank you for allowing us to disable skills. Sometimes the evade skills really mess me up because they come out when I don't want it, and turning them off helps me in some fights. Mm. All of this, balance, nice. combat options, clear weapon He's utility, mini boss weak points, skill tree rewards, it turned me, someone who found 2018's combat to be generally boring and busted, into someone having okay. a great time occasionally. Nice. Okay, because it was never about what you can or can't do. I know that people do crazy combos in 2018, but True. I felt like that game failed at getting me interested in Too caring about caring combos, combos in the first about. place. Ragnarok that. succeeds. Ragnarok makes great attempts at getting players into fun and effective playstyles. Maybe a little too much. I approve of the tutorial prompts, there oh, okay. are a lot of important mechanics you to can introduce, turn them off. but these things tend to repeat themselves you and eventually you'll want to turn tutorials to minimal. There you you go. don't have to don't tell complain. me over and over in don't one complain. fight you can that turn them enemies off, are weak to elemental attacks. Wow, this I video is really boring when he's not complaining. I definitely appreciate the addition of the flashing blue attacks that can be stopped with a shield bash. Yeah. I never used shield bash in 2018. And this got me into... Oh, but when there's a red indicator, when when it says that someone's behind you about to hit you, that, oh, no, 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 I can't see it, I'm blind. Using that attack much more, and now <laughs> I really All enjoy right. it. 
but it is very much a, hey, press this button now signal, which ends up feeling a bit dull after a while. So was the red attack that indicates that people are going to dodge you, or even the audio cue that says, Hey, behind you, brother! You hit the circle button to dodge, or the X button to dodge. I'll okay, and continue. I think maybe there or should be an option take? to disable it. Speaking of things that we should have the ability to disable, NPC hints. Your partner regularly yells at you, telling you to use your shield, telling you to parry an attack, stop standing still, attack an enemy at a certain time. It sounds like you need that with all your annoying. complaining and how I you get backed up against the wall. Like get it. You've got all kinds of players in this game. Yelling advice at them in the middle of combat can remind them of important things they should be doing. But for True. the love of God, let us disable it. You've That's got fair. thousands of accessibility options in the menu, and you can't let us play without characters constantly telling us what to do. That's fair, We've but all seen this clip, bad. haven't we? Oh my god, shut up! You have its attention now! Don't lose it! Okay, you can cut the clip now, we get it. <laughs> Don't okay. just stand there! Move. Oh my god! I will I legit mute the, the voices! Holy I will legit fuck, mute man. the voices. No. Gosh, I can't. I can't deal with this anymore. Oof, it's not that deep. All right. Don't oh fuck. <laughs> okay, you can cut the clip now. We get it. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But what's worse is the puzzle sections. Now, I'm on record for criticizing. I oh, but, but I want a puzzle during combat. <laughs> like 2018's puzzles, and while I do think in Ragnarok they're still limited by the lack of platforming, attempts have been made to make puzzles more interesting this time around. Using the axe to freeze waterways and direct the water towards wheels to open doors, and the ability to string together runic arrows True. helps a lot of the puzzles feel like more than just throwing your axe at switches. Is, uh... So yeah, I praise the increase in puzzle variety, but my appreciation for these puzzles is frequently ruined by mm -hmm. how often they appear. I like puzzles, okay? Survival horror is my favorite genre, and I love a puzzle that gets me thinking for 10 minutes about what to do. But yeah. not in every room. And not when none of them involve combat in an action game. Do people just not remember how much cool puzzle design was involved in the old games? The Minotaur boss wasn't just hitting him, you stunned him and made your way up to the launcher to impale him. There was a part where you had to protect a guy from killing himself while you were fending off monsters. You killed centaurs in a magic circle to unlock a door. You had to move a prisoner up a ramp for a Sounds sacrifice kind of while enemies came at you. I hate God there was an elevator that would crush you if you didn't kill all the enemies in time. <clears throat> you did executions on sirens to use hey, their yo! voice to break open doors. God of War 3 had a cool section where Sensor zombies that, walk into bro. a wall of energy and convert into large monsters, so you have to keep them away from it while fighting the big guys. Yeah, this stuff makes the combat more than just strike and defend, with combat-free puzzles in between. It creates a larger experience, despite it actually being a shorter and linear game. I think it would have been cool to see some kind of puzzle where you have to juggle an enemy over a certain area for a while, and maybe this enemy has to be burning but it dies quickly, so you have to figure out a way to get it burning with your spinning blade what? and then launch it and keep it in the air burning before it dies to open a door. Some kind of puzzle that actually teaches combat skills, Lil not bro, just Lil stopping just everything to be in a quiet room for several minutes, no idea figuring out was. where to throw your axe. Without combat in any puzzle rooms, the game turns into a slog. God of War Ragnarok has a pacing problem. As I stated before, large amounts of the campaign and some side missions have you fighting a small group of enemies, two if you're lucky, and then solving a puzzle in the middle of a bunch of walking, talking, and cutscenes. It's kind of fair, but no. is particularly bad about this, with constant rooms asking- The only asking part where the pacing was really bad was just the ironwood part, which I agree to with. To throw but... your axe at crystals to open doors. Imagine if instead of all these puzzles, they'd yeah, spent more time and game. resources yeah, exactly. on better designed it combat goes. spaces and some actual vertical Vertical combat options. They seem more interested in presenting traversal puzzles to the player than interesting combat scenarios, and the result is that puzzles that should be making me happy because they're well designed are having the opposite effect. I just want to experience the combat some more, but there's a locked door in my way and I gotta spend Little several minutes can't trying solve to figure a puzzle, it out. So he's pressed. And right before I do in actually figure it out, a character just blurts out the solution. Completely unwarranted. 
You couldn't realize? Are you kidding me? It out. A character just blurred. Little bro could not tell that it couldn't turn because a rock was blocking it. Ain't Turns no out the way. Solution. Completely unwarranted. And he can't even throw the axe. I think my arrows will stick to the wood up there. Yeah, that one. Nothing ruins a puzzle really. like being told the solution right they as you're to about to off. get There's it yourself. Other games have done this way better. I think it was Uncharted where if you need a hint, you could press square and your friend would direct your attention to something. True. It would be great if they could rework it to be like that. Because knowing the puzzles are going to be spoiled for me definitely lessens my drive to want to replay this game. As if I would ever re- but you would remember the puzzles if you replayed the game. You're not going to forget about that. This guy's Ragnarok. actually like... Ooh. I played 2018 once when it came out, and then three more times preparing for my original video. I played it twice on hard, no once on... I wonder why you got bored of it, Lil Bro. And again on Extreme New Game Plus, which is admittedly a much better experience. My plan going into Ragnarok was to play it on the Give Me No Mercy difficulty and then Extreme, Give Me God of War. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get two solid playthroughs under my belt for this video, maybe 100%ing one of those playthroughs. Wow. But after suffering through so many unskippable cutscenes which last hours, boring as hell tasks where characters ask you to go fetch rocks for them so they can fix machines, that was and one especially time. Especially the god awful Atreus levels, which also take up which were hours. Fun. And I you got to see your freaking girlfriends. Angerboda, Sif, Mommy Sif, oh my gosh. And to play this game Ooh. again. And it's sad because I would really like to just go around fighting all the bosses again, but not if it means I have to go through all that crap. A new game plus mode will not help this much because even if it lets us skip cutscenes, there's still hours and hours of walkie talkie climbing <laughs> nonsense and unbearable Atreus can't play story levels. Game. You think new God game plus is, is going to come with an option to so skip the Atreus levels? I don't think so. Maybe if I liked the story <clears throat> more, I could tolerate it. But Atreus is simply too much for me. I came to like the other characters. Brock and Sindri had some interesting developments. Came to like. It was like very the sad to lose Brock and see Sindri become consumed by hate and ultimately be the one to kill Odin. It was actually a compelling part of the story. The yeah. epilogue scene saying goodbye to Brock was moving. Freya dealing with her trauma of being married to Odin was good to learn about. I became interested in Freya's forgiveness of Kratos and it was nice. wonderful to see he them become the story. partners. Nice. Actually, Fuck. the parts playing with Freya are way better than the one with Atreus. She feels like a much more natural no. companion. No. The drama- It's his son! How does his son feel like less of a companion than some- some girl? I, that's not even related to him. And Thor's family was interesting to me. You're saying this? She feels like a much more natural companion. The drama in Thor's family was interesting to me. I give up. You complained about the bar fight scene, which explicitly showed- which specifically showed that conflict that you like, right? And that dynamic that you like. There, the bar scene showed it all perfectly. Thor was drunk. And then after that, they had their little conversation. It was kind of sad. Throod and, and Thor. And it led to the better ending where, like, you know, he kind of, like, lost the chance to rekindle that relationship with his daughter. But you like it and then you don't like it. Like, you need to – he's not consistent. And that's what makes his video so funny to react to because he's just stupid he's really just stupid. anything involving he's anyone other stupid. than well, atreus I, you know. I found myself Sorry. enjoying but kratos's part in all this it's still very underwhelming to me in most of the story he's relegated to a mad max role where he's not actually the main character in his movies it's about the people <sighs> he meets no way, and that's bro. not a bad way to tell a story but kratos is such an interesting character that we've come to love and want to engage with more i'm really disappointed to see him take a <sighs> back seat to no most way, of the story bro. he has his moments yeah and ultimately his journey ends up being more entertaining as he eventually becomes leader of the army to attack asgard that's yeah. a great destination to reach. Kratos never saw himself leading an army again. But the journey itself to get there it was I good. Don't know. I'm just not into it. All like right. I said, well, this is the Atreus for everyone, story. I guess. Atreus drives the plot. There's actually this great moment where after we find Atreus out Atreus drives the plot because it's Loki, like literally Loki and myth or um Norse mythology is like the doer of like all these things. So of course, he's driving it a little more than Kratos, which comes from a different pantheon or like Greek mythology. And, like, Atreus doesn't drive the plot. I don't know, dude. It isn't who he thought he was. I and don't Brock know. dies. Kratos and Atreus just leave. They're like, we're out. No more of this. And then you go back to your homeland and go hunting like everything is fine. I 
Did he play the game? I'm pretty sure Kratos stops the arrow, or someone stops the arrow because they realize like they need to face it head on or something. They can't just like solve their problems by hunting and just being like peaceful or not peaceful, but like doing something else to fix a problem that's happening. They left Sindri's house because I'm pretty sure Sindri told them to go. And they didn't feel comfortable with it because they felt guilty for Brock's death. I, I love this moment. And I wish there was a secret ending achievement somehow okay, where yeah. you just choose to never go back and let the world burn. Missed opportunity. <laughs> what? Like last game. He's actually trolling. I love this moment. And I wish there was a secret ending achievement somehow where you just choose to never go back and let the world burn. Miss that is not the point of the game. The point is literally to stop Ragnarok from the get-go. From the get-go is to stop Ragnarok and to become better father-son still. They're learning. They're talking. They're having all these conversations. And Kratos becomes a god of peace at the end. I don't... Best opportunity. What? Like the last game, the best moments for Kratos is when he's doing something that reminds him of his much more interesting adventures from the other games. <laughs> okay. He talks to Mimir about his brother Deimos, and when he's forced to strangle Heimdall to death, hearing him say monster as his final word, his eyes turning black, is a powerful moment because it brings us back to the person Kratos is on the inside. Mm. That darkness that he's wow. trying his well, hardest to story. leave behind him. That's but earlier he complained about Kratos like not doing something. I forgot because it was like an hour Probably ago. Probably the most about it effective earlier. moment in the whole game. I have been falling back into my old ways. Story Heimdall is a very God of War 3 style boss. Super arrogant, teasing Kratos, pushing him to the limits of his patience. And near the end of the fight, ah, when you bro, think you've won, Kratos rushes in and that old God of War fan in me was screaming for him to just rip his head off. That's what I wanted. I got really excited. That's the darkness of the old Kratos that's inside me. But he only impales his arm, pinning him to the wall. Because he's learning to not be driven by rage and to just be a better person. He's learning. He's learning. That's the point of these games. Uh, oh my gosh. To be fair, I did wish this boss fight was a little more gory. But once again, that's against the purpose of Kratos' journey. Yes, when a character had development. Ah, like, oh Giving him a gosh. chance to surrender. The adrenaline was... Like, I wonder, like, if he ripped off his head and did not have that development. If this guy would like it or if he would complain. You know what I mean? Like, like... Alternate reality. Pumping through me, and I sat there ah. anxiously, waiting to see what would happen next. I tried to calm myself. And then he blew off his arm, and it was dope. As Kratos was, resisting the urge to kill him. I was trying to take the higher path with Kratos. When Heimdall refuses to yield, threatening Atreus, Kratos rips his arm off. A brutal punishment for disobedience, but still not murder. He's doing whatever he can exactly. to refrain okay. from killing another god. Why is he just but when Heimdall him? comes at him again, Kratos understands that there is no other option, suffocating the life out of Heimdall, giving him some kind of victory by revealing to him the Kratos that he was <laughs> and probably always will be deep down. This is great stuff. A game centered Wait, around these just themes would about make it? me very happy. Oh. Sadly, most of the game's story is oh, centered around our unlikable son. <sighs> okay, never mind. He was having a good characters. take, and then it just eventually ending with us okay. waging war on Asgard to save the realms, and it's all just kind of okay. True, I I concur with that actually. The final boss fight could have, or the final fight in general could have been way more bombastic. All this was good, but I feel like the final fight with Thor and Odin should have been like on top of Jotungandr, going through the nine realms with Finrir or something, and then Thor sends them back. Yeah, it happened a little way too fast for my liking, and I did not like how Odin's fight and Thor's fight happened at the exact same location, pretty much. It is a final boss fight, and we're fighting two of the most badass characters in Norse mythology, and it's at a, like a house. That is like a little bit, eh, but... It's a noble cause, but it wasn't very exciting by this point. The fights in Asgard to get to the end are pretty unremarkable, <laughs> and I me. think I was just getting tired of the combat by that point, so there's that too. The Odin and Thor boss fights are genuinely fun, but they're, they're fun, spoiled but... by one too many checkpoints. And as we know, checkpoints spawn you with full resources, <laughs> so you can empty six runic attacks into them right away when you load a checkpoint. It makes the fights less interesting and challenging than they could have been. 
The best part of the final chapter is seeing Kratos become the general. Kratos. Seeing everyone refer to him as their leader is a moving scene. Because Kratos never saw himself taking this position again, and now the whole world is depending on him sure. for their survival, instead of him being on a mission that destroys the world like he was in God of War 3. It's great character development. It's why I ultimately like this game's story a little but then, more than But then every time he compliments the game, then he's just like, oh, but Atreus' part sucks. That's it's it. Because despite all the terrible focus on Atreus, by the end, Kratos is in a very interesting place, and I like that. He says goodbye to his son in a scene that is incredibly touching. It almost brought a tear to my eye. What? So where does that... This guy can cry and have emotions and understand the game's purpose? Leave us. The story of Ragnarok what? is over. It's a huge okay, game, it was enough story for two games, but they <laughs> wanted to wrap it all up in this one giant adventure. Was it too much? I don't know. I'm not used to having to play a game for a week to complete it, so I'm tempted to say yes. Hmm? But I also did a lot of side content, spent hours in optional boss fights, and I intentionally put off finishing the campaign because of the Atreus levels. So oh, maybe it's not stop. too much. Stop. It probably depends on how you experience it. Personally, I feel like the ability to go on side missions detracts from the urgency of the plot. Odin is- What? Go in on side missions, distract- or like detracts from the point or like the tension of the plot. This guy literally said he would go out of his way to do side missions to avoid Atreus' part, which was involving the tension. So you like tension, you don't like tension, you like going away from the game, you like going to the game. I don't understand. There's so much hypocrisy. Is this it's like this guy wrote his script for the video and took a week break and then wrote it again. Like he, there's no continuity with Great this. Great threat that we need to assemble an army to stop. And Kratos yeah, is upset keeps about his son himself. disappearing. But hey, why don't you relax for a bit and go run errands for ghosts? It's so weird. And I guess that's it almost at, like with every open world game. If you don't want that, how about you just play through the whole main story and not do any side missions? So do the side missions at the end. You can do that. Beats my preference for linear Gosh. action games. I always felt the momentum of the story in the original God of War games because you're going in one direction. You never took five hours out of your day to go fart around in a desert on your mission to kill Ares or Zeus. You just I did feel good about that. raising the dam and restoring water to the canyons, what? though. That was a side mission that felt like it had purpose and a real effect on the world. If only this was a linear action game and that was just <laughs> part of the story. Now that I've beaten the campaign, seen the epilogue, found most of the Asgardian wreckage, beaten eight of the Berserker boss fights, including a few fights versus the camera, I think okay. I'm done. The wreckage fights have been very underwhelming, He's I feel done. no drive to find new gear, the remaining side quests involve a lot of empty wandering around, and yeah, I may go look for a few more boss fights in my spare time, but honestly, I'm just uh, getting tired gosh, of the navigation. Totally I already exactly. mentioned it, but the inability to fast travel at any time is really hindering this experience for me. I got lost in a part of Vanaheim up here and I decided to make my way back to a gateway because I couldn't find one up here. That's maybe fair. there is one here and I just didn't find it. I couldn't find my way to the undiscovered area, so maybe it's up there. But because I didn't find one here, I had to run all the way back <laughs> down the map, running in circles a couple times because I got turned around That's and I kind spent of fair like 10 minutes just running been better around in the jungle trying wherever, to get to a gateway. To do most what? Games don't do Go that. run around some more? That's when I officially soured on this game. It's so pretentious, soured. they expect me to be happy retreading these happy, dead happy, environments happy. looking for treasure or something. Unable to fast travel anywhere happy, unless happy, I make happy, a five happy. minute trek back. Happy, it's insulting. But at least it's over. There is no reason at all to I can't wait to read these game, comments. So I can be done with it. I can look back on my fond memories of boss for like, fights read the comments for like five minutes and said, then wow, I brain. love my brain's like actually in a fog right now because all of these degen takes this and the touch and then i'll stream i'll stream either later tonight or tomorrow that happened in the story the beautiful i have callisto environments protocol. and i can try my hardest to forget game. nearly everything else god of war ragnarok was the most complicated game i've ever played or talked about what? it is better than 2018 in many ways uh, i'd say it's a hear. better game overall good to hear but wow. the major okay. flaws this game has in certain areas <sighs> combined with the incredibly bloated campaign story moments with unskippable walkie talkie cutscenes and five hours of atreus missions are in my opinion uh, unforgivable guy, the good stuff keeps me from saying it's a bad game hell in the end i never even said the last game was bad it just had a lot of bad stuff in it 
it. <laughs> this game isn't bad either. It's half really good and half really bad. The good stuff is better than it was in 2018, but the bad stuff is way worse. worse. Okay, that's the incredible guess. potential this game shows is at least brought down at nearly every with turn, that. and that's what I call ruined. Thank you for watching this video. It's been an emotional ride. Let's hope the next God of War game goes in a different direction. I don't think I can take another one of these. Shut up. <laughs> Alright, let's read this. These comments are actually supporting the video. He had some good points, but I feel like the bad points of his video outweighed the positives, just like God of War Ragnarok in his eyes. He kept contradicting himself, but overall, it was a good video. Um, yeah. YouTube, thanks for watching, and leave your comments or leave what you thought in the comment section, alright? Um, thank you for watching. Peace out. Love you guys.